If you've seen some of my earlier videos, you'll know that I'm quite interested in micro hydro generators. Not just my own projects, but ones that other people make too. eBay knows this and is always keen to show me when new turbines come up for sale, such as this one from a small outfit in China. They actually have a number of different products for sale, some of which look quite intriguing from a construction and safety point of view. One in particular caught my eye and I was sufficiently tempted to put in an offer of around £100 I think, which got accepted and here it is in this box. Actually it's been in this box for six months because I've not got around to opening it yet. So let's have a look. I actually can't remember much about what it said about this turbine on the, the listing now. Okay, there's lots of newspaper. All in uh, Chinese. So I can't really read that. Okay, a little bag of bits. Uh, something. I presume this is the, the main turbine. Uh, nothing else in the box. No, just more Chinese newspaper. Which is what you'd expect. Okay, well this is obviously the main thing, so uh, let's open this. Need to cut the wires in. So do remember from the listing, this uh, turbine was rated, I think it was 300 watts. And it was listed as outputting, I think it said 220 volts, 230 volts AC, it said 50 hertz. We'll have to check all that. That's going to be fairly arbitrary anyway. Being a hydro, it's, it depends on how fast you make it spin, I suppose. Oh. That's interesting. Okay, first impressions, it looks actually quite well constructed. Yeah, it looks uh, looks quite purposeful. This dynamo or alternator, whatever it is, I'm suspecting actually it's a dynamo. Um, it looks very much like a, one of the many small DC motors that are coming out of China at the moment that are sold for things like um, treadmills and electric scooters. Uh, things like that, hoverboards. There's a there's a whole range of them out at the moment that kind of it looks like one of those. I might be uh, might be wrong. It's not necessarily a problem if it is. Uh, but uh, the few I've taken apart in the past have actually been fairly sort of poorly made. Not not terrible, but poor. Um, it was definitely sold as as a, an AC generator, so that should make it an alternator. But it looks. It just has the look of a DC motor about it. Not quite sure, we'll have to establish that. So obviously you've got an input and an output for the water. And usually actually they're the same size, they look like one inch pipe to me. And I'll tell you what is quite strange, is that there's an arrow on that, which signifies outflow, output. But in a turbine situation, this would be an inflow. And quite why um, the outflow is the same size, I'm not quite sure. Normally that would just be open. You you just, the water would come in, spin the turbine, and then you've got to get rid of the water as quickly as possible. I think this is a pump. I think this is a water pump. I don't think it's a hydro turbine at all. That said, it doesn't mean it can't operate as one, but I think this is for circulating water. I think it's supposed to put power into it and it's supposed to actually output water there. Because if you you had that as the, the input and then you applied power to it and it span, that, that would then become the output. So personally, I wonder if this has actually been intended as a water pump and someone's realized you could generate power from it by 
pushing water through it rather than pumping it, then it would then make power. That's my hunch. That's not to say that it wouldn't it wouldn't work as a as a, a turbine. We'll have to see. The first thing I'd like to know really is whether this is actually a DC motor, as I'm suspecting it is, or whether it's um, an alternator. A quick and easy way to test that would be simply to connect the two terminals to a battery, and if it spins, it, even if slowly, it's definitely not an AC generator, it's not an alternator, it was going to be a, a dynamo. So first thing I'm going to do is go and get a battery. Okay, I've got a battery here. Let's just see how much power is in it. Uh, 23 volts, a bit more, that should be enough to test it. Even if it is 220 volt, if it's DC, it will still spin with that. Just slower than intended. If it doesn't move at all, then that's good because it means that it's not a DC motor. Or at least not a brush DC motor. Right. There we go. Right, I don't know if you can hear that on the camera. Uh, that is definitely spinning. So that kind of proves the theory really. This is not uh, this is not an AC generator at all, or an alternator, it's DC. Okay, first off, my first problem is with this, is this, this is a pump, it's not been built as, as a hydro generator. That's not to say it can't run as a hydro generator. Let me go and get a screwdriver and take these four bolts off and let's have a look at that. Okay, as you whatever you want to call that. These are the uh, what do you call these veins? That's that's really tight. I find it hard to believe it's supposed to be that tight. So now if I just hook the wires up you'll be able to see it turning. If it does turn. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is turning, but there's a lot of resistance. It's almost like there's an alignment issue with the the motor shaft. Hmm. See, the problem is, when that's on there, the water is hitting the, whatever you call these, blades, veins, I don't know. It's hitting them like that. You want them to hit like that, right? So they're kind of facing the wrong way. This doesn't feel very good, this feels very tight indeed. I can try and get the this uh, assembly off if it'll have it. See if we can see why it's struggling so much. So what's all this then? Just a some kind of mechanism to hold that down. That's uh, unusual. Oh, it's going faster. It's 
freeing off a bit. <laughs> that looks a bit happier. Okay, so that's just the motor. So, hmm. so I guess that's the seal to try and keep it watertight, but it's introducing quite a lot of friction, which you really don't want on a hydro turbine, because you're trying to generate power, not heat bearing surfaces. This will probably go much more quickly now. Yeah. Well, I'm inclined to try and remove that bearing surface there. It's not even proper roller bearings, it's just a plastic bush really. To hazard a guess that it means well, I think it's trying to um, provide a waterproof seal, but it's going to greatly reduce the effectiveness of the uh, of the turbine. Now, if, you, if you didn't have it at all, like that, um, how does this even go now, like that? Yeah, I mean, the, the problem you're going to get with that is, uh, I guess, it's going to get wet. You're going to lose a lot of power to, to that. I mean, it's difficult to turn just in my hands because of the gloopy, whatever this is, some kind of grease. No wonder the motor was struggling to turn. So if you were to just use this um, without the seal, yeah, I think the danger is that you're going to get a lot of moisture um, coming towards the motor shaft. I don't know how much of a huge problem that would be if it was upside down. I don't think it's going to be coming out under a huge amount of pressure. No, really what you want to be doing is, is opening this up, I suppose, to reduce the pressure buildup inside as much as possible. Um, actually, the main problem with it being DC rather than AC given that this is a brushed motor, is that it's it's going to wear a lot quicker. You see inside you've got the, the rotor and you've got two brushes that come in um, to each side. So as the rotor spins, it makes contact, uh, electrical contact. And those those points, they do, they do wear out after a lot of use. You wouldn't get that with an alternator, at least you shouldn't get that with an alternator if it's been uh, designed correctly. Um, so there's no, no brushed contact there. Let's have a look at what's in this little package. I'm quite intrigued as to what this could be. That's everything. I wonder if this is supposed to be like a pipe clamp of some kind. It's appallingly fabricated if it is. I can't quite see how that's supposed to work really. Yeah, I guess some kind of pipe clamp. Um, maybe more obvious with this. Let's have a look inside here. So I suppose that's something they intend for you to put on the end of the uh, the cable there so you can have your 220 volt DC. And these are um, solvent weld couplers, I guess. They are for going onto these. It doesn't, doesn't even fit. You would have to have some kind of one inch hose or something. Uh, on that, are these supposed to hold that on there? I don't know. <laughs> they don't seem to fit anything at all. 
Okay, I'm just going to put this back together now and uh, go and find a water supply. So I've come underground into a slate mine that I work in because here is about the best water source I can think of to uh, give this turbine a test. Coming down this main um, penstock pipe here, it's a four inch pipe, it's 100 mil. It goes up to a header tank that's about 80 feet vertically, or about 22 meters or so uh, directly above. So it's quite a nice big fat pipe there. It goes down into a two inch uh, valve here. There's um, an emergency shut off valve there. Uh, normally this pipe drives this turbine here, which should have to be the subject of another video. Uh, but I've decoupled it just for the moment, just to test it. There's plenty of water there. If I was to turn this on, you'll see it's quite, uh, I'm not gonna go mad, there's no water going everywhere, but it's, there's quite a bit here. So what I'm going to do now is just hook up that little turbine to the, uh, the, the female coupling here and we'll turn it on and see what we get. As you can see I've rigged it up now so it goes into just a little tube here and straight into the turbine. It just discharges straight through this grill, it slots in there quite nicely. Uh, and I've connected up the two output terminals to my multimeter which is set to auto range DC. So I'm going to turn this on really carefully now and just see what happens. This is going to be obviously open circuit DC, so it's probably going to go quite high. Let's see. Water's flowing. Nothing happening yet. Let's boost up the power a bit. Uh, it started spinning now. minus 200 volts not that, that matters but just because I've got OCD I'm just going to turn these around okay here we go Alright, we're seeing readings there of about 270 volts. Uh, that's obviously DC, that's, uh, that's quite a lot. There was definitely leakage from the, the coupling there where I talk, took out that ceramic bearing, but I think that ceramic bearing was going to have a massive impact on its um, efficiency. So, just to get an idea of what we can really power with this, what I thought I'd do is just connect this up to an incandescent light bulb and see what happens. So as you can see, I've just run the, the terminal zone to this light bulb, incandescent light bulb. This bulb is uh, 60 watts for 240 volts. I know we were seeing like 270 odd before, but you know that's unloaded, so it's, uh, it's going to be less than that when it's got a load on it. So what I'm going to do is uh, just turn this valve on, see how bright it gets. Oh, we've got some light. Well, I'm glad it worked, it lit. Uh, that wasn't 60 watts. I know it's hard to tell on the, on the camera. Uh, I'd say that was, I don't know, that was more like a 25 watt light bulb, if I'm honest. I think it's rated output of 300 watts is probably a little bit, um, a little bit creative. Uh, I'd say that was showing about 25, maybe 30 watts output on that, which is cute, but it's better than nothing. It's actually more than I thought it was going to do. So my conclusion is that this 300 watt AC hydro turbine is actually a 30 watt DC pump being deliberately missold. In all truth, I'm not even remotely surprised. However, it does actually generate electricity and maybe could charge a leisure battery on a camping holiday or something. So it would be wrong to say that it's totally useless, but it almost is. Thanks for watching.